So I've given you a basic idea of what the disease is. So you might say to me, well, so what's the problem? Why can't we identify it? Well, this slide will, is my prelude for the next slide. And let me just start with saying that, first of all, in order to diagnose it in any of our children or any of our adults, someone has to be thinking it's possible. If the, if the, if the uh, words atypical HUS don't pop into their brain, they may not even, in fact, think about it for a part of the diagnosis. The second thing is, is that the, the, those, that list of hematologic parameters that I gave you, those are very um, sort of nonspecific, if you will. There's going to be a lot of diseases, unfortunately, unfortunately, that do have those presentations. Maybe some of them, maybe all of them. But the bottom line is, is that it's not completely clear cut whether you are dealing with atypical HUS when the patient first presents. And in fact, it's made worse by the last bullet here. We don't have a, a good diagnostic test. It's not like I can say, this test is positive, therefore it is 100% sure that you have atypical HUS. We just don't have that. And why is that important? Because of this. It's alphabet soup, right? But unfortunately, physicians face this every day. When a patient presents with those hematologic parameters, absolutely each one of these diseases could be uh, actu the actual cause of that. And, and I don't need to tell you all of these, but this is thrombotic, thrombocytopenia purpura. Uh, this is the diarrhea-positive HUS or the typical HUS. This is, um, let's see, this is, uh, acute kidney injury, even some patients with acute kin kidney injury can have some low platelets and anemia. So are we talking about atypical HUS? So you can see a physician who's facing that particular group of hematologic parameters is really stuck because they really have to have a very high index of suspicion to take it higher. And what often will get in our way are these two particular diseases. So in fact, I think most of us are pretty comfortable when we're talking about diarrhea positive or the uh, endemic form or the, the um, infectious form of HUS. Most of us can understand that. But when we get to this other one, thrombocytopenic thrombocytopenia purpura, TTP, then it gets a little bit fuzzier. And I'm going to try to present a little bit of a schematic for you that might uh, make, make you understand a little bit why it can be fuzzy for physicians.